All right, welcome everybody. This is our special guest presentation with Mr. Dave Ewing. Um, for those of you that uh, don't know Dave, uh, shame on you. And for the rest of you, you're in for a treat because Mr. Dave is an awesome, fun guy who actually, in spite of that, is very talented and professionally accomplished in the world of graphic design and marketing and advertising. And um, this is a great opportunity for us to pick his brain and hear a little bit about his career and where he's been and what he's done and how that has you know, affected uh, his career path. And I'd love to hear also a little more about his new venture, which is Heave Ho Creative, something that uh, he can describe a little bit later uh, when we get to it. But um, Dave, if, if you're there, why don't you uh, say hi to everybody? Hello, everyone. Thanks for having me. Patrick, you honor me. Appreciate you. <laughs> well, you're my hero and uh, private guru and everything. So you're, you're here to drop some truth bombs on the students. Um, so just to start out, just my first question, um, you know, how did you get started? Where did you start? What was that like for you as, an, as a young designer, young, uh, young creative? Yeah. Um, so back in my day, uh, we didn't have phones, um, like at all. Uh, we had rotary phones, so you couldn't, yeah. there was no smartphone action. Okay. And <clears throat> bands like musical bands used to play, we used to paint the town. That means throwing up flyers, literally, you know, stapling on telephone poles. Uh, and so I, I kind of grew up in the music scene, uh, up on the central coast of California, if you guys know. Um, San Luis Obispo area and we would do shows and I would come up with like magazine clippings and I was doing art not knowing that I was really doing design I just thought no I just think this band is sick and I want you know to help promote and I was like a street team member um, and they still have a street team but now it's all you know social driven and uh, other things digitally but um but yeah so um, I was gonna say I was going to school at Cal Poly Slow um, so 1996, and I was trying to be a teacher. Uh, I was a kinesiology major, which is uh, how your body moves. So I was going to go PE and be a coach. And um, I was getting some shirts done for this group. Uh, it's like a nonprofit. And I met this guy named Lou Dog at a, a Morro Bay, kind of a surf skate. It's like screen printer, and I was sweeping floors and was just peeping him like some night he was working on a computer doing some stuff and I was like whoa 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 what's going on and uh Lou Dog became my first mentor and showed me the ropes um in terms of using actual software and uh I got to do some work for him and do a little like little simple things and really kind of just something was stirring in me so I was doing this work I was enjoying myself uh, still going to school to do you know kinesiology to be a, a teacher and I started getting paid clients. And that wasn't just like the family fund discount, you know how you, you do. And um, those are fine. That was a great thing, a way to start. But uh, yeah, I started doing it more and more and getting more clients. And then I had people paying me, you know, like the, the $100 like logo turned into like a $1,000 logo. And I was like, holy crap, you know, and I can do this, but I'm waiting tables, I'm working with kids, I'm going to school and then doing this design thing. And long story short, um, got out of everything, kept doing design and doing waitressing. <laughs> and I'm sorry, that's not, that's, not, that's not a funny joke. But anyway, I was, uh, you know, doing, being a server and uh, basically wanted to pursue it full time. So I went back to school because um, I dropped out of kinesiology and I got a degree in marketing and business marketing and uh, went back to school a second time to get an AAS in graphic design. So I think I kind of answered some of the questions on the list, but that's how I got my start. And that's kind of brought me to today, generally speaking. Same school for those uh, no. degrees? Or? Well, unfortunately, I went um, private school for graphic design. So you're still painted off is what you're saying. I, I actually I paid it off last year. It didn't take me too long. <laughs> nice. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it wasn't the smartest um, decision for me. Yeah, let's just say that. <laughs> well, that's... That's a interesting route from coach to uh, design coach. I like that. But I still coaching. get to teach, just not yeah. 
in the classroom. I'm actually not allowed than 250 feet of any school. <laughs> That's why we keep you safely at a distance on Perfect. Zoom. So um, did you want to start off with any slides or uh, do you want me to keep hitting you with questions? Yeah, let me show you this. I'm going to show you my why. You always got to have a why you do what you do. All right. You guys can see my Insta feed. This is my why. This is my kids, my dogs. It's my wife. Oh, uh, well, you know what? We see the, the Catalina Island. Hmm. Well, I'm screen sharing. That's not good. All right. I wonder if it's on the wrong monitor. I only have one up. Um, does this do anything right now? No, it's coming. I guess not technical difficulties. All right. Awesome. So let me get back to me. Let me get back to me. You guys see me now or no? Yeah. All right, cool. <clears throat> That's weird. All right. Anyway, uh, yeah, I was going to show you some pictures of my family. You guys can check me out at Dave underscore Ewing underscore on Insta if you want. You don't have to follow me. You can just creep. <laughs> well, um, so <clears throat> if we want, we can uh, try sharing your screen in a minute. Okay. Um, if you want to fiddle with that a little more, but maybe while we're looking at the resolving that little technical dif difficulty, um, what, uh, what did you study in design school that maybe left an impression on you? Anything that stands out from your teachers or for your, from your classes? Yeah. Um, so I went to a place called Platt, uh, in San Diego. It's right near, uh, SDSU and it's a small private um, made up of a bunch of industry professionals that were still working and then teaching, which is really cool. And I know you guys have that obviously uh, in Patrick, but um, so we got to, um, I was really fascinated with the business side of design. So I got to test out of a bunch of stuff because I, I took um, that coursework. Gosh, I already been doing work for maybe 10 years at that point. So I was able to test out of a lot of stuff. Um, so I didn't really learn anything new. Um, software wise, like little tips and tricks and things like that. But really it was about picking the brains of, of these instructors I had about, you know, the work that they were currently doing the work they had done any advice. I'm naturally curious, uh, always asking questions, uh, love to understand the why behind things. Um, oh, okay, cool. And, uh, yeah, so upper left, that's Rowan and Lane in the wetsuits. We're a beach surf family, my wife in the black and white down there. Um, her name's Kelly and we've been married for a long time and, um, yeah, she's my best friend and, uh, yeah, I just, I like, I take pictures of my iPhone. I'm not like hardcore, uh, whatever, but yeah, but that's, this is your why. This is my why. This is why I do what I do. Um, because when they see me doing what I'm passionate about, it inspires them, right? My kids to see that daddy's dreams didn't. <laughs> wash up when the kids were born, right? I'm doing what I want to do. I'm doing what I was made to do. I'm doing what I, I think I'm good at and I know I can get better at. So yeah, it's really exciting for me. So. So you were talking about picking the brains of your professors. Yeah. Um, so do you feel like, um, if you feel like they gave you good answers or did you have to kind of figure it out on your own? you had to know the right questions to ask, you know, Oh, Hey, what are you working on? And then I think I have a natural conversational ability. <laughs> I don't know what that's called, but, uh, it's, it's Gift of gab, I think is what they call it. Maybe. Yeah. I just kind of <laughs> get to know people, you know, and, uh, give a crap about them. You know, it's like when you're just asking for yourself, it was like, Oh, cool. Let me look at this. And Oh yeah, no, I saw this and I'm sending links to other work or articles I read. And so there was that, natural reciprocation, you know, of value being added, being traded. Um, so it wasn't just, and I was older when I went back to school for the graphic design. So um, like I said, I've been doing it for 10 years. So I was pushing, I was almost 30 when I finished, um, went back for that degree. Um, and the reason I went back was because 
uh, it was really tough to get through HR barriers to, um, you know, get hired or just get in front of somebody that actually understood that the portfolio is what matters uh, most. So that was, that was a challenge and that was an expensive change, but it, it's, it's paid dividends. At least I like to think it has. Uh, I made some great connections that led to some work. So there's that, but yeah. So um, talking about that a little bit, um, you know, in today's world, a lot, especially in the design world, it's, it's not necessarily the degree as much as it is your portfolio. You kind of mentioned that. Yeah. Then there is that barrier sometimes when you apply for a job, they want to see, uh, you know, bachelor's degree or something like that. Yeah. Um, but what advice would you give to someone at community college working toward an AA, what the, what they should do in terms of looking for the right gig? <clears throat> yeah. If, if you're, I mean, I don't know what the ultimate goal is, but you do not need to go to a four-year university to get the right job. Uh, I don't even think, I mean, I'd say you need to, I think finishing high school is a good idea for people. Um, I think it's just a flag. But in terms of college, um, it's kind of like with clients, like working for someone uh, full-time, uh, like W-2 status, is they're like a client, right? So <clears throat> when I deal with clients, I'm not just taking anybody. I'm, I'm making sure it's a good fit. And I think what happens is, is that the company or the client is the foot and you're the shoe. And it's like, why does the, why does the foot always get to say the shoe? Shoe, you don't fit me. Because as the shoe, I'm saying, actually, you don't fit me either. So uh, there's that. So it's a, good, um, it's a good reframe in your mind when you go into these things and you, you're, 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 you're kind of starting off this journey. Um, I'm at community college. I don't know what's next. But if you're not trying to build your portfolio simply outside of what um, is going on in school, uh, you need to ask yourself some, some, some tough questions. Like, what do I, what do I want? Uh, what do I really want to do? Because if, if, if you haven't had those nights where you can't wait to wake up in the morning or you just can't go to sleep because you got to, you got the juices going on a project, um, you haven't caught the bug yet. Emphasis on yet. So uh, I'd say my, my so best it's contagious. It's, it, it is it's self contagious. It's like, it feeds on itself. It builds on itself. You, you, you can't stop thinking about it. And the, your mind is, is working and, 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 and it's, it's a thing that you can't get out of your system. You just, you gotta, you gotta create. Um, and even if it's commercial stuff, you know, and like, Oh, that's boring or whatever. It's like, it doesn't matter. It's like, you're, you're, you're solving problems, right? You're, you're, you're like, you hit a roadblock. Uh, and if you hit a roadblock and you're the type who's like, Oh, forget it. This is not the <laughs> feel for you. Um, <laughs> I'm not saying you can't have those moments of like, frick, I can't, I don't know. You got to get away from it and come back to it. But um, at least the way I'm wired is when there's a roadblock, it's not a matter of, oh man, I don't know if I can figure this out. I don't even let those words come out of my mouth. <clears throat> it's uh, yeah, this sucks or this is hard, but uh, I can't wait to knock this thing out. I can't wait to finish this. I can't wait to get over the hump. I can't wait to cr create a different path. You know, it's just like, well, this isn't working. It's like, well, you know, sometimes it's not just about jumping over it or blowing through it. Sometimes it's like, you know what, I got to back up and I got to go a different way. Uh, and I think that's true for any uh, craft, uh, whatever you're creating, whether that be something with your hands to, you know, something we do, I mean, I guess we do it with our hands, keyboard and mouse, but something digital. Um, yeah, you got to have that resiliency and that, uh, that mindset going into it that there's nothing that's going to, you know, nothing that's going to get in my way. <laughs> I like that. And like you were saying, you know, it's something that, that you just want to do. You have to do. You're almost compelled to do, right? Yeah. Um, so working outside of just like an assignment or a client project, um, where, do you, where do you find that motivation? Or is it just something you were born with? Or is it that you finally discovered it and decided, oh, I, I want, to, want to have that? What, what was it like for you to just discover design like that or creative creativity? So it there's probably two camps for this. There's the one camp that thinks, Oh, you're just born with it. And there's another camp that says, no, you can discover it later and whatever. Um, you can be born with something and it's not unearthed yet. Right. Like you might have, um, an inkling or like just a natural set of abilities for something that you would have no clue because of how you were raised, where you were raised, what you were exposed to. Um, I have a friend who honest to God, never took an art class in her life outside of, you know, grade school. And she just started painting a few years ago. And now she's opened up her own online gallery and she's doing really great work. Um, and that wasn't her jam at all. She was 
I mean, I think she was like a office manager, you know? So uh, was she born with it or did she just happen upon it? It's like, I think that we're all born with certain things, but um, a lot of times if you have a passion for something, but you don't have the talent yet, <clears throat> the, the real talk is you gotta, um, and I know that if this was like a Hallmark card, I'd say, you can do it. And like, just, just not everyone's gonna be cut out for certain things. Like I really love photography. I don't know if I'm cut out to be like, I'm going to have covers on surfer and you know, I'm going to be featured on this site and that site or whatever. Um, and that's okay. Right. That's okay. I don't have to, to be that. But, uh, if I was that passionate and I had to do it, I think Patrick, to your point. Yeah. Like I, I couldn't like, not like it would just be this, you'd have this, um, this intrinsic reward system, meaning like it's not from external sources. It's in, it's from the inside of like, little steps that you make and you feel like, yes, like I'm getting closer to my goal of being a professional X, Y, Z, or getting this certain account, like working with this certain person or, you know, whatever your goals may be. Um, but I, I think that it's a combination. I think you're, I think you're born with it. And I just think sometimes it just gets unearthed later. Uh, I know a lot of designers that went to school for it and now they do nothing like that um, because they thought it sounded cool. To be honest, design's kind of was like, sounds cool, right? Like, oh, I'm gonna be a designer. You know, I was like, oh, I'm going to do this. And uh, I think it's one of those sexy majors that people think, you know, they can do and they don't realize, like, I have all these creative thoughts. And my mom told me I was awesome. And then it's like translating thoughts down into your hands to be able to create that or to create that, you know. Uh, it's The juice is worth the squeeze, all right? It's like, that's why it's, it's in there, man. It's exciting. It's exciting. Yeah. Just, you'll have to ask yourself at some point, like, man, is my talent not there? And why is that? And who's my mentor? And who's speaking life into me and encouragement that actually knows what's up and not someone like, no offense to your mom or whoever raised you, like, <laughs> you know, pervert, like the mom, you know, who's just like, oh, sweetie. My mom still says to me, oh, honey, that looks so professional. I'm like, it freaking better. I did get paid. <laughs> 42 years old, I was like, Oh, honey, you're like, it's looking so professional. I'm like, thanks, mom. Pass the mom test. Yeah. Exactly. Gotta, gotta, gotta look for that. I, I always, I always hated the mom portfolio review. I gotta tell you, that was always rough for me. Um, but, uh, so, you know, kind of switching gears a little bit as, as these students are getting ready to kind of move on and start their careers. Are there any, uh, you know, working with other designers, are there any mistakes that you see young designers make or uh, folks fresh out of school as they try to get a career? Yes, I, um, <laughs> so <clears throat> there's a, and th these are general terms. So if you get butt hurt listening to me, um, we can work on that on a separate call, but just take this with a grain of salt. Uh, and it's not a, I'm, I'm generalizing, right? So but in general, uh, I think there sometimes is an attitude when you've got a school like, I'm ready, you know, now I know everything I need to know. And it's like, if you haven't adopted that lifelong learning kind of mentality, uh, you're gonna suffer. Uh, and I don't mean you're gonna suffer, but like you're gonna, it's gonna, there's gonna be some bumps, man. You're gonna be, you're gonna be pretty bummed because uh, the more that you, no, the more you realize you don't know, uh, which is crazy to think, but that's true with any facet of life. Uh, the older you get kind of like, Oh my gosh. I mean, you can look back on your 10 year old self, right. And say, Oh, what an idiot I was. I thought I knew this, whether it's like with personal relationships or stuff at school or stuff with your family or, you know, maybe a job you had, I don't know. Um, so I, I think not being a know it all is, is a huge thing. So try to, if, if you feel like you say things and things kind of spill out your mouth about design and people like have that reaction, it's time to be introspective. <laughs> it's time to kind of look in and say, gosh, am I projecting? And maybe I don't want to be that way. Or maybe you are that way and you just don't realize it yet. It's really tough. Um, again, going back to having that mentor, that somebody you look up to who knows what's what, that can, can speak life into you and, and honestly um, not BS you. I think it's really important to have someone that's, uh, in your corner, but it's going to tell it to you straight. Um, and then <clears throat> in terms of like technical, like skills and whatnot, um, when you're young in design, you, 
you're sloppy sometimes. Maybe you don't realize it. Maybe it's like, oh, I grabbed the copy, I dropped it on the ad, da -da 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 -da, and then it's like, oh, you know, it's like, well, I copied it from them. It's like there's a misspelled word or something, you know. Um, so having that like hyper attention to detail uh, is is going to serve you well. And it's something too, to be honest with you, that, uh, and I know you didn't ask this yet, but as um, I've hired people in the past and uh, things I'm looking for outside of just the portfolio, like, and I, it is part of the portfolio, but it's even just in the email communications, it's uh, in the text, it's um, just, it's little attention to details, making sure that um, T's are crossed, I's are dotted. Um, and then <clears throat> I was going to say the, um, your file organization, your layers, like, so say you're working in Photoshop. I'm not saying they're perfect at every minute of your thing, right? And this is me just trying to help you, okay? But what I'm saying is if you died today, I'm not trying to be morbid, but like uh, you got super sick and couldn't work on it, okay? Uh, could another designer, could the, could the company that hired you take the working file, the native file, and another designer could come in and everything is in its place? Layers are labeled, it's organized well, you can turn it off, turn it on, whatever. Maybe you've color coded it, maybe you haven't, but it's, it's clear and there's like a, a hierarchy and a, a naming convention. Um, little things like that, that um, as projects increase for you too, even if you're doing like the freelance route or maybe you're, you're, you're paralleling, um, which is what I did, uh, it's gonna serve you well because uh, being organized like that will allow you as your own designer, right? It's your own design kitchen. You come back in and things are just as you left them. And I know you can say, oh, my room's messy, but I know where everything is. Mm -hmm. And it's like, depending on what kind of rights you signed over to the client, if it, that kind of thing, you're going to provide the working files. So have some pride in your work, not just the finished product, but what you're doing because uh, being organized will allow you to be much more efficient. And when you're efficient, It'll free up more time on the front end where you're um, ideating, where you're, you're concepting versus, okay, now I got to spend three hours. What the heck did I do? And then you start moving things around and you, you know how layers work, right? And you're like, oh crap, what happened to this? And then you save it out and they're like, oh, we're missing the tagline. Oh, we're missing the legal, the bottom. That's really easy to miss, right? The fine print. So uh, it pays to be organized. And then my last thing is it's time management. I just see it. Um, it's, it's difficult, but what I would recommend is there's lots of apps out there. Um, I have a system with my phone where I block time. So I'll set a timer for two hours and I'm going to crank for two hours. Um, and then what I, what I do is it allows me to keep record of how long I work for a client, but also I'm starting to fine tune this inner clock in my mind. Like when I, someone says, Oh, Hey, can we have an ISO job? Right. Which is, I want you to cut out a person out of this, picture and we want to put them on this colored background for an ad, right? Or something like that. Uh, how long would that take? And you're like, Frick, I don't know. <laughs> right. Uh, Cause you're young. You don't have that catalog of experiences. So I want to encourage you now to just start seeing how, how much time are you really spending that? Because your time is valuable and your time is billable. So you want to make sure that you want to build a bill. You want to charge um, for the hours that you work. So th those are my, my big thing. I wrote down notes based on questions. <laughs> well, that's a really good segue to another question, um, yeah. which is how do you make money in this business? What's, oh, man. Uh, what's the secret sauce? You know, tell us now. I can help you. <laughs> so first thing, <clears throat> starting out, Patrick. Yeah. 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 Starting out. So you got to do work and you may not get to do it for what you think you're worth. And as some people will tell you, know your value. Don't do free work. You can totally listen to them. And in six months, you still have worked on a project. Then that's cool. Uh, or uh, you give to get. And you don't give to get in a way that's like, I'm only doing this so that I get. You give because, again, that intrinsic reward system activates of like, oh, my fellow human, I'm helping them, you know, with a project. And maybe it's an aunt or an uncle or maybe it's a local business uh, it's really easy to look for bad design and see where you could help somebody, right? Um, so you don't necessarily sit there, well, I put my portfolio up, I did Behance or, you know, I did LinkedIn, like you said, and now I wait. Uh, you got to put yourself out there. And I think there's a lot of stigma surrounding creatives. Uh, and one of those is that we don't communicate real well. Um, sometimes we're like the gamer type or we're the... Um, we're just, we're, we're nerds, you know, in our own way. We're a different variety of nerds. And honestly, like you should be, 
you should be proud of that because being a nerd is really just another way for saying that you're different. Thank God you're different. Uh, you see the world different. Um, that's what allows you to be creative. I think everyone in the world is creative to some degree. I really believe that. But um, some of us get to be, and this is one of my lines, I'm, I'm working on a team, but we, we're the bringers of wow, right? We get to be, a, we get to be a bringer of wow. Uh, and that's that response that a client or, you know, someone else says when they see the work or you're driving, you see the, the billboard and most billboards, not too good. Don't use that as your standard. But uh, it's like, wow, it's, it's arresting, right? Visually, it does something. It makes you feel something. And I know I'm answering your good design question, uh, Patrick, but um, <laughs> uh, it's so important to, um, to kind of like align with that and to attach that. And so <clears throat> do free work. Uh, do passion projects for a portfolio. We talked about earlier, you're going to be excited about things. I do work all the time that I'm not excited about. And I do it to pay my mortgage, right? And I do it with the mindset saying I'm, I'm sharpening skills, I'm learning new skills, I'm making connections, I'm helping someone out. That's incredible. Those are some good freaking reasons, right? Those are some good reasons to, to do work. Uh, so for you, if it's not paid yet, um, whether you believe in karma or God or whatever, and I don't, you know, I'm not trying to get into that, um, but I think that the general consensus on humankind is that good will come back to you. Um, and I think that if you do it with, for the right reasons, um, people will see that relationship and it's like, oh wow, that was really cool. Plus you'll get work that's um, actually in use, right? Versus, oh, I did this awesome portfolio, you know, and I have it here, but it's, it's all concept, meaning it wasn't actually for a client, which is good to have that too. But imagine if you could just kind of get your foot in the door somewhere, doing something, call it an internship, stuff that you can put on a, uh, a resume, right? Um, that's really, um, that's really special. And then the last thing <clears throat> you're asking about, uh, just how we can make money. You need to create content and it's hard <laughs> because, um, we're worried what people think and we're worried uh, about what we think about our own work. Uh, I'll be honest, everything that's on my portfolio now, like I wish I could change a lot of things, but I'm trying to keep it intact because it was for a client. And I want it as it was seen. Um, cause you don't always get to do what you want to do. Um, even at my level or whatever. Um, yeah, you can coach people and kind of try to guide them, but things happen where you feel like, gosh, you know, I know this can be so much better. Uh, and I have a solution for that too, but I'm not going to get to that right now. But, um, to make money, you got to create content so people see, see what you're doing. So really it's about marketing yourself. Who you are is a brand. How do you look? How do you sound? What do you make people feel when they encounter, when they interact with you? So, you know, if you want to do Behance and then people can, yay, and, you know, whatever else. But what if you took it and you created an Instagram account, you know? And um, now there's more interaction. You can do your IGTVs and you do whatever. I mean, God, you can use TikTok to do certain things. Like it can be just you showing you how you, the work that you do or whatever the social platform is that makes sense for you. Uh, and that makes sense for the type of clients that you want to reach. Um, you know, I don't know, you know, I don't know all the, um, the ups and downs and the circumstances surrounding your life. Right. And everyone's unique and different. And you might feel like, ah, oh, I've got all the odds stacked against me. This guy doesn't even understand. He doesn't know. Like you're here right now. You've got an internet connection. You got some skills, you got some chops, you got some great teachers, professors. I'd say the, uh, the odds are in your favor. Yeah. You're in business right? Yeah. Um, there's, there's no reason that we can't, you know, I used to say when, when you didn't have a, a day job, you're self-employed, not out of work. You're not unemployed. You're self-employed. <laughs> you got to find a client. You got to, got to work on it. Um, yeah. I also like what you said about um, doing things that, uh, that are meaningful to you. And to me, that's like the, the difference between being asked to do free work and volunteering to do free work in the sense that if I'm supporting a cause I believe in and I volunteered, I mean, I felt like I brought something special to the table. I I'd more encouraged to do that. But if somebody off the street just came up to me and said, Hey, will you do this for free? Well, no, no, I'm not going to do that. You know, but if it comes from you and it, and it's valuable to you, I think that shows. Uh, yeah. I, that's what I get from what you're saying too. Yeah. Um, so uh, another question for you. Um, how about working with clients? You know, you talked a little bit about 
professionalism and how you present yourself and what you're doing online and how that, you know, either sells or doesn't sell what you do. But how about your client interactions, even on the business side? You know, what's that been like for you? Yeah, it's been good. I think, um, I think my personality is, is good for business in the sense that I am confident in and just like who I am and like what skills I'm going to table. And I, and I know there's things I don't know and that's okay too. Um, but because I have the confidence, I can interact with clients and feel like I'm bringing value. If they don't see the value, my dad told me in sixth grade, uh, Tiffany wouldn't dance with me at the dance. And he said, son, why would you want to dance with someone who doesn't want to dance with you? And that has been a mantra for me for my whole life because really what it is, is it says my value is not found in what other people say about me. Now, someone can judge my work, absolutely. But my work is not who I am. It's not who I am as a person. Yeah, of course, like as creatives, like we get butt hurt left and right sometimes, right? Because like I poured my heart and soul, I, I did this. But if you remember why you did it, wasn't, I mean, if you want to just do work that's all about you, go be an artist, right? And there's a distinction, right? Go create and, and sell in a gallery and, and let people like put their nose up at it or say this, 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 and that and whatever else. But if you want to be a graphic designer, if you want to be a creative that's working for clients, it's not about you, it's about them. And if you can allow that client or prospective client to see that you're there to partner with them and that you're there to, to be in their corner and that you can help them and that it, they feel like it's all about them, that's, some good side, that's a good um, bedside manner, right? That's going to really put them at ease. It's going to make them feel like they're in capable hands, confident hands. And even if you got to, I hate the word fake it, so the phrase fake it till you make it, I hate that. But I will say there is some validity in when talking about, man, I feel like this is too big for me. You know, it's like everything beyond what you're doing right now is going to feel too big for you. Every single thing in life is going to feel too big. It's like, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm going to college. No one's in my family's ever been to college. Oh my gosh, that chick or, you know, that guy or that whoever, you know, they're so, you know, they're, they're above me, they're this, and like, which is all horse poop anyway. But um, any work, any clients, like, oh my gosh, I, I couldn't work for that. I couldn't, I couldn't do that. It's like, stop saying that stuff. Stop, stop, stop speaking that over yourself because uh, it's going to manifest in how you project and how you interact with clients. And you're not going to sell yourself. You're going to either do work for less money because the value, that perceived value is going to be tainted by how you're interacting with the client or you're not going to get the job in the first place. So in that sense, yeah, you kind of fake it till you make it. You fake the confidence a little bit because you, you, you focus on the things that you are good on and you rest on that. And it might be a small, it might be a small little bit at first. That's okay. You got to start somewhere and then it'll grow and it'll grow with experience. So um, working with clients, um, one of my, my things I, I tell uh, them all the time is, and <laughs> told my, my bosses, my CEOs I've worked for in the years, uh, is to manage expectations. And I know I've said that a couple times. And what that means is you're not just managing your own expectations for, you know, gosh, how you think something's going to go down, um, but you're managing theirs as well. And that comes in the, <clears throat> the form of what is your rate of pay? Uh, what are your payment terms? Like, is it a net 30, something where I submit my invoice and then it's 30 days from the submission date, I expect to be paid. Otherwise, there's a 10% or whatever um, addition to it. Um, the timeline for projects. Uh, what are the actual deliverables? Being very specific because it's like, oh, I need these ads. And so you go and you save out and you're like, oh, JPEG sounds good. And like, hook them up with JPEGs. And they're like, oh, yeah, these don't fit. Or, oh, it's, you know, the software we're using is not accepting these files. Like, they're not the expert. You're the expert. So you need to have a list and I would have something like saved on a Google doc or however you like to do it. Maybe it's on your phone, your notes section. That's like your go-to cheat sheet for these are the questions I have to ask clients every single time. Specs is number one, that's deliverables. It's what, what are you delivering to the client at the end? Uh, so it's, it's, it's dimension, it's file size, it's file type. Uh, and, and, and really too, it's, uh, there might be a lot of var uh, variance with it. Um, for example, if you're doing like a branding project or maybe at your level, it's just, um, I'm doing a logo, right? And so you give them a logo, right? And it's full color and you're like, all right. And then guess what happens? They go, oh crap, we, we dropped it on this image and we can't even see it. You're like, oh shoot, let me get you a white version. You know, and then you do a white version, right? And then next thing you know, you're kind of learning like, oh wow, there's all these other iterations of the logo for different applications. Uh, maybe it's across platforms, just usage 
right? And then, then you're like, gosh, well, they're, why are they putting that headline right next to my logo? It looks like crap. You know, it's like so tight. It's like, oh my gosh, I need a style guide. I need a brand guide. I need a brand Bible. Um, and so instead of you just fumbling through and trying to fall forward with all that, uh, there is about a million one resources. Obviously, start with, you know, Patrick and Sonny. I don't know if there's a, a professor on the line, but, um, you know, start there. Uh, but then go online and see, like, what's, you know, type in, you know, branding checklist for a client. So much information has be sh been shared. It, you shouldn't have to mess up yourself when you have these resources where you, you could actually learn about it. And imagine being a designer and not having the internet. Okay. Just I can. not having that wealth of resources and knowledge. I, I don't have to imagine it. I was there. Uh, I had one person that had, I had to rely on word of mouth. I mean, this sounds like caveman, like hieroglyphic, like hands, you know, on the wall type stuff. Like it's crazy, but I couldn't just look up whatever I wanted when I first started. It was like, I was at the library getting books. Yeah. The paper ones. Yeah. That's what I did. Um, <laughs> also, um, <laughs> Dealing with clients, you're going to manage expectations through uh, all your communication. I like to do something on an email as a little like practical application where I put, uh, I have a running total for billable hours. So there's no surprises. I want to manage your expectation. If you surprise a client with that, they're going to be pissed. It's going to be, it's not going to be good for you. Uh, and there's a business term that's been around for ages. It's to, uh, you under promise and you over deliver. Uh, and that's just a good, I do that with my wife. She's <laughs> Babe, I'm going to, I'll take the trash out, you know, before I go to bed tonight. And then I do it by noon. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> she thought maybe in the nighttime, I said, oh, girl, shoot, I'm, I'm over delivering. I'm getting the trash out. I mean, she shouldn't have to ask me to take the trash out because we're a partnership. However, uh, with clients, uh, if you tell them I'll have it to you end of day, Friday latest, right? EOD. Clients waiting. Why well, put them in a position where it's four o'clock, five o'clock, and then do they know the difference between COB and EOD close of business versus end of day is my client on the East coast. And so they're expecting that at 2 PM. Do they sign off at 4 PM on the East coast because it's a Friday or maybe it's the third Friday of the month and their business they're done at noon. These are all things that you've got to ask the right questions so that you can manage the client's expectations because managed expectations means that when something comes up, you can manage your expectations. Say, I know I said this date, uh, you guys changed this. I didn't get the file from so-and-so. And now I'd like to, you know, I need to push this a day. Um, what's great about that is they feel like they're in capable hands. I mean, imagine, you know, a surgeon coming out and just being like, yeah, I know I said two hours. Um, sorry, it's been, you know, you know, 12. No, they come out and say, hey, this, someone will come out and tell you. It's like, hey, this is taking a little bit longer. Uh, no need to worry. We're thinking we're going to be done, you know, 8 o'clock tonight. So I just want to let you guys know, right? Just letting you know is it's, it's not code, but it's, it's the same thing as managing expectations. Um, don't miss deadlines. Do not miss deadlines. I'm going to tell you this right now. And you may not believe me in my professional career. I have never missed a deadline. That was my fault. And I don't mean my fault, meaning I had something personal come up. That's not my fault. I've done all nighters. I have freaking pulled out all the stops. You've never, I've had to hire people to help me uh, in the 11th hour, the 12th hour to get it done. Uh, I, I have asked the client before I said, Hey, can I get an extension? Not, five minutes before it's due, right? But like anticipating, you know, something comes up. Um, but I've never missed a deadline where the client felt like, dude, you said you'd do it and you didn't, you didn't do what you said you're gonna do, right? It's, it's a hallmark thing in my career. And if you have missed deadlines before, like get over it, turn over a new leaf, whatever. Uh, but it's a stigma on designers, on creatives, is that we, we're, we're just kind of loosey-goosey, a little artsy-fartsy, uh, you know, kind of our own breed. Uh, you wanna make money, going back to that, don't miss deadlines and watch the clients come in because word of mouth is, is really powerful and recommendations are powerful. Um, always use language that says you're working with them and not for them. If you're working for them in a subservient role, it's going to change the dynamic of the relationship. You're not going to get paid as much and uh, you're going to be frustrated through the process and maybe not the first time or the second time, but pretty soon you're going to have this repeat business of like, gosh, I just feel like I'm a slave to the grind here. I feel like I'm this. But when you start using language that says, I can't wait to partner with you on this, talk soon in your email communications, or you're on the phone or a Zoom call, or you're meeting someone in person, soon, meeting someone in person. Uh, it's, gosh, thank you for your consideration. I, I'm, I'm so stoked to partner with you on this. I can't wait to work with you on this. So it's, 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 it's reframing things and not saying I'm doing this for you, but I'm doing this with you. 
for you, with you. For you, with you. For you, with you. Tom Cruise, I forget what movie. Anyway, <laughs> um, time management, know how long stuff takes you. And then um, just keep it positive. Like if you feel like, man, I'm not a very positive person. I'm, I'm a realist. Get out of here with that crap. Get, get out of here with that. I don't want to hear like I'm a realist. Uh, you, can, you can turn on, on and be positive for your client. Put a smile on your face. You can uh, make sure your email, like reread it before you hit send. You know, even if there's a problem, especially if there's a problem, keep it positive. You're going to get paid sooner. You're making, so you don't get paid. Maybe there's a situation where you weren't going to get paid. You didn't know this, but they're just like, dude, we're just going to leave this guy high and dry. Just keep it positive. And then when the bad stuff does happen, they're late on paying you. They, they decline your, your, your proposal, whatever it is. Um, it just, you're, you're starting at like a, a different level. So you're looking at it different. When you're positive, you're, 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 you're up higher and you've got this view, you're this vantage point, right? So if you get knocked down a few pegs, you're already up here to start with. But if you're just negative and that's like your, that's like your default position, uh, in life as a person, as a creative, as someone who's trying to make business for themselves and you get that bad news, you're like, yep, see, I knew it. Yeah. Figures, just my luck. Well, nothing new. This is cancel, cancel, cancel. You want to make money. You want to work with clients well. You got to keep it positive. And sometimes I don't feel positive, but I speak positive. And I wish I knew how to do that when I was younger, but I didn't. And uh, I, I was the person who said, oh, I'm a realist. Um, and I wasted some time. Big time. <laughs> so, that, that's a tough lesson to learn. Um, yeah. And that takes a lot of... I don't know. A lot of work. It's a lot of effort to be positive all the time. Um, it is. And, and I was going to comment too that uh, there's a lot that goes into communication. Yeah. The way we communicate with people, email, in person, like you said. Yeah. Something that uh, maybe we don't focus on enough when we're, you know, trying to start a business or get prepared or do something is think about that client communication, just yeah. human to human communication, yeah. right? Um. Well, uh, I was going to ask you uh, one more follow-up. Just uh, what haven't we talked about yet that uh, you think we should know or these students should hear? Um, yeah. I was going to say, um, I was going to say that your, uh, you asked me a question about good design versus bad design. I think that for the masses, um, there's more bad design than good design out there or just subpar. And I know we say design is subjective, right? Or it can be. And, and that's true because we don't always know what it was designed for. Maybe you're just not the target market, <laughs> you know, like in everything you design, uh, it's never, you're never designing for everyone ever. You're never designing for everyone. Um, and when you get clients that, that want to just widen the funnel uh, to collect as many, you know, uh, that's, that's, that's a rough spot to be in. And for me, just with my marketing background, it's, it's tough um, to, to hear that. But, um, but yeah, so you need to, you, you think that you have an eye for design, right? You were born with this eye. I just know it looks good. I like my style. We dress ourselves. Um, we, we decorate our house. We pick our car. We choose our color. And so does everybody else on the planet or whatever. You know, people that can afford cars and whatnot. Everyone here in the United States has a car, right? Or has a house that they rent or they own or they dress themselves, thinks they have some kind of style. Uh, and these are the people, because it's everyone, that you get to work with. Um, and it's, it's tough because they're sometimes the decision makers just to tell you what you did was good or what you did was bad. Uh, and I'm oversimplifying, right? Um, and that's tough because everyone has an opinion. And the analogy I like to tell people and try to help frame things for clients or, or for bosses that I've worked with that I'm working with is that let me be the cook in the kitchen. And if there's an ingredient that you feel really passionate about, let me decide in what amount and at what point in the process it goes in so that the end result, the baked, whatever deliciousness actually tastes delicious, uh, that it actually is edible because what happens is, and sometimes I call it Frankenstein design is you get all these different, you know, okay, well, someone's, you know, Susie from sales and, you know, the freaking janitor saw an ad here. And so he's weighing in all of a sudden now, and, you know, and, oh, hey, our CEO's got a nephew uh, out, in, you know, uh, 
North Carolina who's a design student who knows and you know and it doesn't mean that good ideas can't come from anywhere but it's like if everyone's putting things in the pot it's not going to taste good so you just kind of like you know hey let me let me be in charge of the pot you know let me let me help um, decide how much and what things can go in and you know you pick and choose your battles some things are just gonna ruin the whole thing you, you know you do that but um, I was gonna say that that's a really big um, it's a really big thing when you're trying to decide what good design bad design is knowing that what you see out in public even if it's a big client you know it could be whoever it may not be good design just because it's a big-time brand because you don't know what went into it behind the scenes you don't know all the people that came in and kind of it got mutated, right? Or or maybe the message got diluted, or or, or you know something happened. Uh, maybe halfway through the project, they they took it from one agency and gave it to somebody else, or maybe they took it in house, or you know vice versa. Um, so there's lots of different things, but um, don't look to other students as being the standard for what good design is. And I know that sounds harsh. It doesn't mean you can't see elements that are good. But to say that a student is the standard of what good design is, it might be what gets you an A, right? And that makes sense because it's, it's but it's relative, right? It's relative to the, the environment that you're in, the circumstances you're in, and what you're being exposed to. Um, so I would recommend, you know, following people on social, following people um, that, you know, are, are actually doing it. Not the people that just necessarily, I mean, there's this saying that goes, like, you can't give what you don't have, right? Um, it's like, if I haven't been there, it's tough for me to explain that to you. Um, I can tell you like theory or like what I've read or what I've seen, and you can take that with a grain of salt, but it means something more like, wow, you know, this person is super successful and they do the type of design that I really like, you know, maybe it's like a vector illustration or I don't know, whatever. Um, yeah, you might want to listen to that. You might want to take notes and look at their design and what makes that good? Like, what do I like about it? Knowing full well that there are design principles, straight up math, straight up science that goes into design that's never going to change um, just like in music and I know I've said this uh, at skills before um, you can have five people playing a nice harmony right and doing something and one element one person is off one instrument plays the wrong note and it just it's jarring there's something that just gets you don't know why there's something it just it wasn't in harmony uh, or you, sometimes you, you hear something and it just it makes you feel something inside and, and music is really math expressed in, a, in, a, in this beautiful auditory 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 uh audible way right and so for you design i know design goes beyond just what's visual because we see it and we experience it but it, it is this experiential thing where what is it about it that's making it so good so if you can kind of be detective and, and see these different things and be able to like dissect and, and diagnose and say this and then practice that yourself like take something that's really sick that you love, like you think it's awesome, something you're passionate about, because that'll help fuel you to get it done. Pen to paper, you know, pen to whack them, like mouse to whatever. Try to recreate that for yourself. Um, I think that will really help you to start producing better design and not just being in competition, whatever, with fellow classmates. So. Yeah. So, you know, derive your inspiration from a lot of places, right? Yeah. Um, I'm going to pull up... Uh, your website, sir. And uh, I wonder if you might talk a little bit about uh, this, new, this new thing you're doing. Yeah, um, so I've been like a daveewing.com for a long time. And that was to get, um, that was to get jobs and maybe to get some clients, but I was working full time as a, a creative director. And really I just, I wanted to kind of rebrand myself as a company for tax purposes and for um, just to get the, it's like using different bait for different fish, right? So I wanted to hire paying clients. Um, and so, yeah, I, I built this site this last week. It's just built on Squarespace. Uh, it's not hardcore, custom, whatever. It didn't need to be. Um, we have those capabilities as well, but yeah. And you know, talking about campaigns that I did, uh, what my role was. Um, you know, there's some videos on there, there's some things. Always a CTA, uh, which is a call to action at the bottom, what projects can we push forward and pull together on? And then it's got the little, you know, the tagline for Heave Ho, Heave Ho, let's go. Um, and um, yeah, it's just, you know, and it's a work in progress. There's just things that uh, the site's new. I think it launched on Sunday, Patrick, but 
Um, but yeah, just, just building things to kind of um, showcase what I can do. And there's a, if you go to services, I think, or. So I, I wanted to show specialty and things that I feel like I really bring the most value to. And so we've got branding and identity and I've got a, and this is just a way of doing it. Uh, I can tell you how great I am, right? Or I can tell you, oh no, trust me, trust me. <laughs> Linda, Linda, listen, listen. <laughs> I'm really good, Linda. Um, or I can take snippets, um, pull quotes, right? From, well, magazines do it all the time. Uh, write newspapers or just articles, right? That you're reading online where you, you do a pull quote that it's nice because it shows them, yeah, hey, I am a great listener and I, I can make an outstanding artist. I'm able to hear beyond, I need a new logo and actually create what an organization needs to tell their story. Like there's some buzzwords in there that I really want. Um, I want to affect the person who's watching this that wants to pay me. And if I just had a list of things, um, it's kind of tough and I have that list, but each one I have a, a, you know, a call to action really clear. Hey, schedule a free 30 minute consultation below. Let's talk branding. And then if you scroll down, <clears throat> it's like, I have another one and I, I include the person and like kind of, I want to give credibility to the person who's saying it. And you're seeing it's just like, it's Mark W and you're like, okay, I don't know who Mark is. Or maybe there's a photo and it's like, this is a real person. Um, but like putting where they work, like someone could actually look up Mark W and look up some of these brands or Annie C, uh, and look up some of these brands and maybe see them on, 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 uh, on LinkedIn. And then at the end there, I have other capability services, things that we can do. Um, and again with, you know, each one has its own CTA, very specific. Uh, so it flows nice. And then, uh, yeah, then it's user contact page for general inquiries or click below. Um, so I want to give them options to navigate the site and not feel like they have to scroll up or click something else. And I could get into the whole science behind that, but, um, but yeah. Uh, and I, so I want to lead with the work and, and the whole idea behind heave ho is that it's something that sailors would, 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 uh, it's like a cadence that they would say, heave ho heave ho. And it's this idea that you're working together to do something you couldn't do, uh, alone. And it's that extra oomph to push limits of what you thought possible by pulling together. And obviously I've got to play on words with push and pull and uh, something about being together speaks to being collaborative. So for me, I've branded myself or my company um, like this. And you've seen this layout probably a hundred thousand times uh, with different artists and creative agencies. Um, and there's a reason for that. It's because it's proven to work. It shows people, uh, you know, it shows people what you can do. And at the top, uh, I have this little banner, uh, have projects, schedule your free 30 minute consultation. I will give 30 minutes of my time, which is valuable. Okay. My rate, just so you know, like it's, it's, that's a lot of money that I'm putting out there to do because it's not just 30 minutes. It's 30 minutes talking to them, but it's another 30 minutes or an hour of me researching, right? The company and making sure that I have value in that 30 minute consultation. Um, so, um, but yeah, but this is site launched on Sunday and it's a work in progress, but, uh, it's exciting. Uh, my DaveEwing.com, I think I had maybe, I was average like 20 visits a week or something like that. And I know it's only been Sunday um, that I let people know, but I mean, it's 1,500 visits, you know, oh, so nice. yeah, it's exciting. Well, talking about that collaboration and kind of that working together, um, that's, that's why I love school. That's why I like working with students. That's why I love working with friends like you because I, I get something out of that, that partnership, just like you said, working with someone, working together. And I think using that as a metaphor for your business is a great idea because that's, that's what we're doing, right? Yeah. Um, and uh, uh, we're running out of uh, how much I can pay you. So we're probably going to have to... <laughs> <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> probably gonna have to enter the question and answers portion of our our interview so um i think your responses have been fantastic and i appreciate all the information you've shared uh but i do want to uh take a little time to open up for uh student questions so um if you've got a question uh you can type it in and uh we can read for responses or if you want i can unmute you raise your hand and we can hear some of your feedback. So any questions? 
All right, Susan posted a question. Uh, can you read these questions, Dave, or do I need to read them? Yeah, to you? did he cold call people who became clients in the beginning, or does he cold call now? Uh, to answer that, I'll get to the rest. Uh, no, I don't cold call. I do reach out on LinkedIn. Um, I love health and wellness industry, so what I do is I search for founders or for any like senior level person on uh, LinkedIn, but I don't do it automated. There's a lot of automation. Um, I'm really looking for fit, so. Uh, I reach out to someone and I go on their site first. I see where there's a, there's a problem. There's a pain point. Right. Uh, and then I, you know, I do a little research and I'm usually following these companies already because these are industries that I like and I consider myself an expert in certain industries. But, um, but yeah, so I will cold call email, say, Hey, would love to, if I'm already connected, would love to connect. Um, you know, Really, I loved that last, you know, whatever campaign, blah, 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 blah. Hey, I noticed on your site you had this. Man, if there's any way we could ever work together, uh, I'd love that. And I'd love to have, uh, you know, a quick call. I know you're super busy. You know, it's not making excuses, but it's acknowledging that this is a CEO of a company. Oh, here, let me talk to this, you know, student or this person about, you know, whatever. So I want to make sure I convey um, some of the value that I have and not just check out my portfolio. I don't want to be real specific. It's tough because of balance because I don't want to be so long that he loses interest or she loses interest. Uh, but I also want to, I want to make sure they understand how many emails or LinkedIn, what they called um, emails that they get, you know, messages they get. Uh, so a great way to start that kind of make them a warm lead is to interact on their page, interact in the comments section, uh, let them see you there, make sure they're liking your comments. Maybe they're writing back. Oh, great Dave, That's a great point. Start providing, uh, credibility uh, and, and conveying that you're interested in that person. And then does he recommend site for a cheat sheet? Oh my gosh, honestly, just, I would just Google it. Um, yeah, I would just Google it for anything. I think you're asking about uh, for like branding or like assets, right? I think that's what that was in regard to. And then does he do his own building? Does he have people work from home payments? That's a really good question. Uh, I am in the process of hiring a VA, which is a virtual assistant. Um, so, it's there's software out there that can do amazing things. Uh, one I'd recommend is harvest and uh, it's multifunctional, but what's great about it is uh, it will send out emails on certain times with the hours you have to put inputs in, right? What the hours are that you've completed for the project <clears throat> and it automatically sends out the email and then it sends a follow up. Like you can specify all the, you know, the, the parameters, um, so that's a great way to do billing, but I have a template in, um, in illustrator that I use and I basically have layers for each of my clients cause I have a lot of recurring work. I have stuff where I'm on a retainer. Uh, I have stuff where, um, you know, it's a one-off project. And so I have these things all saved out as layers in, uh, illustrator. And then what I do is I archive, uh, ones that are maybe defunct, not thinking they're never going to come back, but I just, I don't know. And I don't, I don't want to cluttered up, but it's great because it's just, I'm putting manually putting in the, the, um, the inputs, like, so amount of hours, but it's tough. I have a cheat sheet for myself. I have a big board. Um, let me see here. I'm going to show you. I don't know if I can't see my screen. I always see is you Patrick. Um, so I don't know if you guys can see there's a whiteboard back there and then I have it color coded. I know it sounds like, Oh, you should have software. When I'm on my computer, I don't want to have to pull up another computer just to check that. I can look, I see it. I have my notepad to say where I'm at. I'm on a call, um, you know, and I don't want to be click, 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 you know, and I want to put on mute where they ask me something and then it's like, oh crap, I'm like delayed. You want to sound like I'm being responsive. Um, but it's crazy. I have color code to say, yes, I'm working on this project now. It needs me to do something. I'm waiting on them or the project itself is on hold, but it's still in the hopper. And then I have new work. Uh, and then it's like either I'm like, so I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I have 10 prospective clients and four of them I've reached out to. So six, the ball is in my court to reach out. So that's my system. And guess what? I'm old, right? Like you might think, Oh my God, why would you have that? I'm old. Like this makes sense. to me. This is my flow. Uh, and it's great because there it is. And then if I'm going to leave somewhere or whatever, I can take a picture of my phone if I really need to. But um, for me, that's what really works. I do love Trello for file um, project uh, management, and I use Slack like a mother. I have like 18 accounts, uh, channels on Slack, which is really great. And then um, when he has a consult, does he research first for a call? Yeah, I answered that. Heck yeah. 
Um, if you're not researching before a call on a consult or before you reach out to anybody about something, you're just going to get egg on your face. It's going to suck. Um, show them massive respect by, by, and not just like, oh yeah, I looked at the site, like commit some things to memory. You know, heaven forbid, like you say something that just they're like, whoa, they've definitely been on the site, right? Like I even look for like, this sounds manipulative. <laughs> I'm not trying to be manipulative. I want them to feel important, right? Because they are important. Otherwise, I wouldn't be talking. My time's important, right? So I will look for odd language or like an odd detail that we only know if you've been on the site. So sometimes it's like the about section is a great place to start. And it's like, oh, and so-and-so is a bartender on Long Island, right? So I was like, you know, I'm not making this up. Right? It's only if I can actually relate authentically. I was like, oh my gosh, I remember summer I was uh, Long Island, blah, blah, blah. I saw you bartended that. What was that? I mean, what a crazy transition go from bartending and now you're a CEO of a company. Oh, I know. Da, 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 right. It's like, find that thing. It's like a, it's a, it's something unique about their side or about their story. Um, something that you can relate to uh, would be really special. So hopefully that answered all your questions, Susan. Richie or Jacob says, did you decide your specialties based on what you enjoy doing most? Yeah, that's such a freaking good question. Did you decide your specialties based on what you enjoy doing most or what you feel you're best at? Or is it both? It's a combination for me, for sure. Um, I think when I started out, it was like my specialty was whatever I could do. Um, it wasn't like, you know, oh, I really want to be good at, you know, X, Y, Z. Like I really want to do websites because this was a new thing, right? This is like GeoCities, look it up, uh, level stuff, right? Um, a little bit past that, but I mean, it was, it was nuts. Like there was no email. Like the, my first email account was through my college at Cal Poly. And I was like, what, this is weird. You know, like my first phone was, you know, my mobile phone was like the flip and I, or actually it was a slide one. And it was like, you know, there's like three letters on each number, you know, that you had to do. I mean, it was like, it was rough. You know, it was like, I just, you just called, you never texted because it took too long to, 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 but you had to be careful because certain times of the day, right? You got charged more. So anyway, uh, so for me, I started that way. I started with my specialties was, this is actually what I'm capable of. But now, yeah, there's some things that I, there's certain elements of design types of design projects that I like more because of the client or because of the industry. For example, I'm super into action sports, adventure stuff. Like I love surfing, love being in the water. So, okay, I'm super like social media, like drives me crazy. Okay. I don't like it. I just, it's just like, I like it for myself and doing like my own digital, like, you know, like just my images for my family. Cause it's great memories, but like doing it for a client, any other industry besides like surf or skate or snowboard or outdoor adventure stuff. Like I'd probably say no, but for that, because the nature of the client, cause the nature of the industry, I'm going to say yes. So I might have specialties, meaning I'm, adept at doing that but as far as like what i'll say yes to um yeah that I, I get to be more picky nowadays which is good actually nowadays i'm not as picky patrick <laughs> launch my business i want to take more clients but <laughs> you, you cut through the chaff pretty quick <laughs> so i think i think we got time for one more question and then i'm going to stop recording oh okay. you want to take a stab at this one and then uh, afterward we can have a little you know casual little q a Sure. So Sam, so real quick, Marshall, uh, I got to work with Bethany Hamilton, Carrie Walsh Jennings. Um, and do you work for them with their Bethany Hamilton's, uh, she got her arm chomped. She's kind of like big deal. She's got a big account with Quicksilver. Um, so that was awesome. Got to work with her for two years. Uh, and then, uh, Carrie Walsh Jennings, the Olympic volleyball player, Sam Beach volleyball player, uh, worked with her for three years. And that was really, that was really rad. Um, as far as other big companies, no, I'm like mid-level, small, smaller companies. Um, I actually have a heart for startups too, to be honest. I want to, I, it's fun because you're doing the branding from scratch versus, oh, we have equity in this logo and we really want to, you know, just do a refresh. You're like, oh, it sucks. You know, and like, but like a startup is like, oh my gosh, you're not a well-funded startup. Uh, <laughs> you get paid is, uh, wow, this is really cool. Like we get to build this from, from nothing. I mean, that might be a great answer for why I got in design because I got to build something with nothing. My dad's doing wood shop projects and cars and I'm on my computer, but I was building stuff. Uh, and then Sammy said, passion projects. What does that mean? Um, 
if you know how to make ads, right, in Photoshop, like digital ads, and you're super into uh, exotic cars, then do ads for exotic cars and make them and then put them in context, like mock them up, right? Slap them on stuff, do like some dynamic stuff where you've got like, maybe it's video or maybe it's like gifts or something like that. Um, you said it's hard for me to make something. Um, start with your school projects, bud. I'm assuming Sam's a guy, sorry, I can't see pictures um, or anything like that, but whoever you are. And then, you know what? Reach out to me on um, LinkedIn. Look, look me up on LinkedIn. Uh, it's not convoluted, we're all good, but uh, I'll take more time with you. And if for anybody, reach out to me on LinkedIn or Instagram is fine. Um, you guys can find me, um, Patrick has the information. But yeah, I'd, I'd be happy to go into more detail on that, Sam. Well, um, you know, thank you for your time today, Dave. This has been really awesome. Um, I uh, appreciate you spending your, your time with us. Yeah. Thank you for having me, man.